we're gonna officially start. Okay, great. So my name is uh, Martin Iden. I'm with Compass and I sell real estate here in Manhattan and Brooklyn. And I'm really excited about tonight's event. It's about, it's our first of our moving to series. And we're gonna be talking about Greenwich, Connecticut, as well as Westchester, featuring uh, some of my favorite areas of Westchester, the River Towns. And so what we have with us in Greenwich, Connecticut, we have Carolyn and Jack Sarston. Why don't you guys wave, say hi. Hi, um, hi there. That's who, they, hi. That's, they, uh, that's who they are. It's a, it's a great uh, mother-son team with Compass out there. And then we have Adam Tracy and Zoya Litaneskaya. Did I get that right? All right, I got that right. And they cover Westchester uh, also with Compass, which is, which is great. Uh, run in on it. We've got Dean Curtis with Lone Depot. So say hi to us there, uh, Dean. There he is doing the big wave. And then uh, kind of coordinating all these things, which is great, is uh, Jared Salinas Dick, who is uh, Director of Operations and Marketing here to help us out with everything. Uh, so tonight what we're going to do is we're going to talk about why are people leaving New York or what's going on with that. And then we're going to ask each of these, uh, you know, teams, tell us a little bit about their area, why they want to be here or what, you know, what draws the attractions on it. Um, and then we're going to talk about kind of some of the nitty gritty, like what is considered some blue chip areas to be in, as well as kind of the up and coming areas with it. And then uh, we're going to talk with financing with Dean. Tell us about everything because we have financing here in the city. Everybody's used to 20% down. What's it like getting single family homes outside of the city? Is it more? Is it less? What's it about? And then we're going to have kind of one of my favorite parts of it is, is what do you get for X number of dollars, which I think will be a lot of fun. And then talk a little bit about transactional costs uh, and then some Q&A for everything. And then final thoughts. So these things always go much faster than planned. Um, so that's kind of kind of the quick one, two, three. So, you know, and I, over the course of, of years, by selling both in Manhattan and Brooklyn, I've seen people wanting to move to the, you know, move out of the city for one reason or another. <laughs> Um, usually it's space, usually it's schools or a combination of both. And uh, I've known a lot of people that this was kind of their, you know, one to five year plan of let's, of let's go out to the suburbs. And, uh, you know, with the Black Swan event that we have here, uh, that has accelerated the curve for a lot of people. And so I think it's kind of, if it's in the game plan anyway, why not go out and do it? Um, and candidly, whenever there's a, you know, a black swan event like this with the COVID-19, there's always some people that uh, need an immediate change, for lack of a better word, or, or, or let's get out. So I think people are here considering that and seeing what's going on with it. Um, so Adam and Zoya, why don't you tell us a little bit, what's great about with Adam and Zoya is they actually lived in Brooklyn for a while. And, and then you guys can tell us a little bit about what made you uh, leave Brooklyn to go to the uh, river towns in Westchester? Well, I, uh, I was raised in Brooklyn okay. and I couldn't get out at the time when I was you know, a teenager. I kept telling my mom that you know, one day I'm gonna get out of here. You just watch. So, uh, <laughs> I, <laughs> I, I moved to the city. Adam was actually born and raised a native New Yorker, grew up in the village, you know, got into a lot of trouble as a kid, you know, in the 70s in New York City, downtown Manhattan. And, um, wow. Yeah, we... I, I grew up, I'm so old that when I grew up in Chelsea, but we never said it was Chelsea because you didn't want to be known from being from Chelsea. So I always said uh, I was in the village because uh, I was born on, I grew up on 14th, between 14th and 15th Street. So every time I came out of my building, I just went immediately turned left because I wanted to be from the village, but I'm really from Chelsea. So. Wow. Yeah, so the hospital where Adam was uh, born is now, of course, a condominium, you know, at like 6,000 a square foot condos, <laughs> you know, but. Yeah, Beautiful. Beautiful. St. Vincent's, yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Uh, so so what, what, what was so came, yeah, so we always came part here. of a plan or, or tell me about it, go ahead. So it was actually not a plan at all. Uh, neither one of us really dreamed of living in Westchester. I don't think I've ever even been to Westchester until I actually moved here. 
So um, uh -huh. we had our we had our son, our first son at the time, and uh, our lease was up. And uh, Adam rented a zip car, and uh, okay. that was his attempt to convince me. He took me on a road trip. And he took me to, you know, New Jersey and certain parts of Montclair. Uh, Montclair and Glen Ridge. And that wasn't an option necessarily for me, per se. Okay. But, um, friends of ours bought a house in Hastings on Hudson. And uh, they were suddenly being relocated soon after they bought their house. And they invited us for a barbecue. And uh, again, we rented a zip car and drove here and, you know, about 30 minutes door to door, I couldn't believe, you know, where am I exactly? And it was this beautiful place that felt more like the country than any suburb I've ever visited. And, mm -hmm. uh, and when they announced that they're being relocated, I was like, well, what are you going to do with this house? And they're like, well, I will rent it. So I just didn't even look at Adam. I was like, uh, we'll rent it. And uh, that's, that's how it all started. So soon after moving here, we, we, you know, the signs were kind of everywhere. And although I never imagined selling homes in Westchester, it all kind of came together. Mm. And, uh, and here we are now it's 10 years. And uh, now Compass has offices all over Westchester. And uh, we joined yeah, Compass. Yeah, yeah, we joined Compass about two years, a uh, year and a half ago now. And uh, okay. we're uh, very happy to be here and to be with Compass and uh, it, it all kind of makes sense where we're, we're exactly where we should have been and are. So. That sounds great. That sounds great. Uh, thanks. And, and Carolyn and Jack, what, what are, I mean, you guys have been there for a long time. What, what draws your, your buyers to come out to Greenwich and, and, the, and also maybe give us a little bit of a, of a <clears throat> telling that I, we always say Greenwich, but what exactly does that mean? Does that cover the towns around it real quick? Um, sure. Give you a, give you a little synopsis of that. That you know, Greenwich is actually made up of uh, four towns uh, that you may hear of. Greenwich itself, and there's Old Greenwich, Riverside, and Coscop. So you, you may hear those towns independently, and many people who okay. live in those towns say they're from Riverside, for example. But it's all part of the Greenwich Township, and um, and there are other sections of Greenwich, like you know, Glenville and Pemberwick, and uh, you know, but but primarily those are the four towns within Greenwich. Um, Greenwich is the first town that you reach when you get to Connecticut on 95 in the Merritt Parkway, right off the Hutch, and okay. uh, then as you go up from there, the, the towns that we service in Connecticut include uh, a, a little bit of Stamford, but but uh, but also Darien and New Canaan, the towns, and uh, and are also Rowayton. Uh, we, we tend not to go too much further. We do a little bit of Wilton also, but we tend not to go too much further than that because it spreads a little bit too thin. Uh, we also like to cover parts of Bedford, which is just north of Greenwich over the New York line. So we Got it. cover that. And, or, so we do Bedford, uh, Armonk, and uh, Pound Ridge and that as well. So um, we, we, it's really the, the area once you get uh, uh, into Connecticut uh, past um, the state line we cover the first, say, 20 minutes of your drive. Okay, I got it. it. It's the panhandle, and, if you get that, yeah. Understood. And, and why do people come out, or, or what's the, you know, what draws buyers to, to come out to your area, per se? Or what, what's well, the... Greenwich, Greenwich has always been really uh, the, 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 the destination for, I'd say, the rich and famous. The, it, it, you know, it, it's attracted a lot of... Um, uh, sports and entertainment figures. It has always attracted the um, the, the hedge fund and financial uh, industry folks. Uh, mm -hmm. and so, I mean, when you say Greenwich, typically around the country, people know the name. Um, and it may not be that they're living in Greenwich per se, but it's the area. And I think it just kind of represents just the one town that represents really the entire area. Uh, I spent some time living um, uh, with my boys and my, my ex-wife in, uh, in Darien, which is a beautiful town nearby. And we also work there. There's also New Canaan that people know very well. But uh, Greenwich is 48 square miles. Uh, there, there's 32 miles of coastline. Uh, there are 62,000 wow. there, there, there are, there are 62, uh, uh, residents. And uh, it's really a, just an, an amazing place to live. It, they, they've got uh, so many things going on all the time. Uh, in fact, this weekend, unfortunately, because of coronavirus, we're, we're, we're not able to, uh, to hold the Greenwich Town Party which always has uh, some big headliner oh. bands. And, uh, you know, so it's unfortunate, but we'll, we'll see that again next year. 
and then there's the the film festival and there's the uh the food and wine festival so there's there's always so much going on here uh greenwich has about 17 private clubs and they also have uh um you know just a lot going on in the water like i said 32 miles of coastline okay wow well that's great i i, I forgot mm-hmm. about the coastline and and uh and the size of it and and quickly, Carolyn, where with buyers, where do they do they come from? The Upper East or Upper West Side, or are all over, or what's uh... all over New York? And we get them. Okay. Um, we get international buyers. Um, we have quite okay. a few coming from New York right now. Um, quite a few people are because, unfortunately, of the pandemic, they're renting. But we see more and more looking to buy. And, Understood. You know, if we weren't going through this, we still get quite a few coming from New York. You know, to bring their families. They want kids with, they want property. They want space, as you said. And yeah, no, it's a whole I, uh, different, different type of living. So we do get yeah, that. absolutely, absolutely. Um, and Dean, what what kind of insights do you have? You're you're kind of uh, quote unquote the regular guy because you're you're the you're the mortgage uh, expert here, as opposed to the brokeries. Now you live uh, you live in Westchester, correct? I live in Westchester most of my life. Uh, my family moved up from Brooklyn when I was in elementary school. And for college, we came back uh, and spent all, all my career, 23 years in the mortgage business here in Westchester. Although I'm licensed in the tri-state area, most of my business is, is in the Westchester market and I do get a lot of buyers coming from all over to uh, live in Westchester. And they come for many reasons. Uh, just like Zoe and Adams, at, at, they come up to visit a friend or once they come to visit, Westchester has so many nooks and crannies and different villages and there's so many spots where people fall in love with and they don't realize how different it is when they come up here. It's, it's not the country. They come up uh, and they realize how close to, to the city. And for us and my wife coming from Long Island, it was important to be close to the city. So we were close to Metro North, actually. And when we first, we were dating our first restaurant that we met with my parents and we went out to a restaurant it was in Bronxville in the winter time, which is a beautiful village in Westchester. It's all lit up and beautiful, and she fell in love with it. And, and coming from Wisconsin, it's like, I love to live up there. First wow. place was in Bronxville. We so had, that's where we moved to uh, when we first got married, and uh, we've stayed ever since. And we're always learning different places in Westchester. It's a really like never ending where like nooks, like I say, nooks and crannies. There's always- All kinds of things. Yeah, it seems kind of like a little bit which I think is pretty interesting. And, I, and Adam and Zoya, you alluded to that a little bit with um, you know, how that Montclair just wasn't right, the right vibe or fit for you, but you really enjoyed Hastings on Hudson. Well, the proximity is incredible. And when you get here, you know, it, it could be as little as 30 minutes. And wow. you're here, you, you immediately, you just feel physically that you are so far away. And then you can mm-hmm. complete decompression waterfront and see Manhattan. And a lot of people I've heard say that as long as they could see Manhattan from a distance, they, that connection that they feel they absolutely can't ever give up entirely. That's they great. Feel that they're still connected to the city as long as they could see it. So, you know, when they're waiting for their train in the morning, it's, a, it's quite a nice view. Uh, and, you know, you have the Palisades and you have the, some people, you know, living in Manhattan, you're surrounded by the Hudson River. You know, you're right. surrounded by the river. So it's, it feels very familiar because here you have the river as well in, in several parts of Westchester, especially like along the, the river towns, which, which have up up on the Hudson. popular. Right. That's great. So, so Carolyn and, and Jack, you know, with, with the Greenwich, and thanks for explaining it, it's the four separate towns and 42 square miles. Is that what you said? That's, that's 48 big, square miles, yeah. 48 square miles, that's a, that's a yeah. big... Oh, no, uh, square, big, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah not, <laughs> you know what I mean, something like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So, so what yeah. is, quote, unquote, kind of the blue chip uh, areas, and, and what is kind of the up-and-coming areas that's, that's somewhat, you know, that, that you've seen a, a shift or change uh, that that you feel quickly well uh to, to quickly uh i mean right now we have things on the market for under a million all the way up to about 35 million so okay. it, it really it runs the gamut um and and that could be if you're looking at the the blue chip the high-end stuff that's either by the water uh in Belhaven or uh in, in other areas mean point that area 
or uh, in the back country where you have a lot of land and very large estates. And, mm -hmm. um, and then you, you know, as far as up and coming areas, I mean, there are different sections of town uh, without getting into specifically each one. Again, if, if somebody wants to come in and, and ask us, we can, we can show them things based on their, their price range. But, you know, for example, um, you know, you've got areas of, of Byram, which, uh, you know, are, are up and coming. They're, they're really kind of starter homes and uh, they are, they're smaller and they're, uh, you know, more affordable. Um, of course, much closer together, you're, you're not going to be on four or 10 acres, but, but it's, mm -hmm. uh, um, and, and so you have those areas where people are building and, and they're, they're starting in Greenwich. And then you have parts of, um, uh, you know, parts of Riverside that, uh, that, that are the same thing. And, and, you know, over the years, uh, we've been here a long time I and mean, I've, I've lived in Greenwich since I was 10 years old. So I've been here for wow. quite a long time. I'm not going to let you guys do the math. I'm going to tell you how old how long I've been here. But, Fair um, enough. <laughs> but uh, you know, it, it's been a real shift to be when, when we first moved here, the back country was where you wanted to be. It was the place to live. It was where everybody uh -huh. aspired to be. And now everybody wants to be downtown, close to town, near their yoga, near their latte, near, near dry cleaning, near everything, you know, the restaurants. And they don't want to be 15 minutes away from town. They don't want to have to get into a car necessarily and drive. So it's kind of a culture shift. Um, and that's happened over the years. But we're starting to see that now transition back because people say, hey, you know what? I want to put in a pool. I want to right. build, I want to do something that I can't do downtown because I don't have the, the land. Uh, the green space laws necessarily won't allow them to put in um, and make an addition, put on an addition or, or, or put in a pool or something and say, you know, we want a little bit of space. I'm, I'm okay being five to seven minutes out of town. So you make Understood. that, you know, and so that's, right. um, so the, so right now, I, where where the up and coming area again is is I think in the the back country, honestly, biggest interesting, state, and, and it's now uh, it's coming back, and I think it's accelerating now because of uh, because of coronavirus. People right. want well, the space. Yeah, Carolyn took us there uh, when we were out there, and it was great. I mean, you really get the space, and I can see that. Um, so Adam and, and Zoya, what, what is, uh, you know, are, are, are the river towns already discovered and, and that's old news or, or what's going on? Definitely. Definitely old. <laughs> Definitely old what? news at this point. I mean, people are just trying to, and of course, I mean, it all, you know, comes down to someone's budget. You okay. can, you can still find, uh, you know, a cute house under a million dollars. Sure. Um, and then, but it depends what your expectations are. I think that for the most part, an average buyer that's coming to Westchester, and we hear this every day, the mm -hmm. first thing that they say is that they want to spend less time commuting and spending more time with their families. So Got the it. commute is going to be whatever the rock bottom commute, you know. So you're looking at areas like Bronxville, uh, the River Towns, and Pelham are as really the, the go-to because the commute is, I mean, it's 30 minutes to, to get That's into Midtown. Mm -hmm. and, and, uh, and so what, what are the up and coming areas right now out in Westchester that you would think so would up be? And coming, you know, we, there's a very sweet town called Croton on Hudson, which is still on the Hudson has beautiful views. Okay. They're really, you know, really pretty, pretty, you know, elevations and things like that. And a lot of older homes. It's where, all your, it's where all your water comes from, Martin. Oh wow! Well, so it's beautiful. It, you know, they have a lot of trails. I mean, a lot, uh -huh. a lot of nature. You know, um, and, and on top of that, there's an express train. So 45, 48 minutes, I think it is, to get into Midtown. You know, for people who are commuting for work. Okay, that's great. And and the and train is, is very different than driving because you can actually work on the train or do stuff. Exactly. Right? So, you know, I, I, when we moved here, I, I called it a very civilized view. It's not like being, you know, it's a very civilized community, unlike the subway necessarily, where you're actually sitting, there are quiet cars where no one dares to speak, you know, and, uh, and you have a beautiful view the whole way in. So wow, that sounds exciting. great. Yeah. So, so this is, in a way, and we prepped on this a little bit. Uh, so, so maybe quickly, if you could, you know what? What? What are? What are maybe the one or two want wants of uh, of Westchester? And I'm going to ask the same thing about uh, Greenwich. Um, is there what? What? What is a, What would be a con or or something? 
a con? It's always tough to ask sales people these questions. I don't, I don't well, know. Well, I mean, I grew up in Manhattan. You know, I grew up in, so I'm like, you know, I didn't grow up in the suburbs. So I have a very different perspective. So when you say what are the negatives, I mean, depending on how, whether I've had any coffee or not, I can, I can have a lot of negatives. <laughs> I'm, trying to, I'm trying to look at things positively lately. So, no, but I think that I think that growing up in the city, you know, what draws us to the city? I mean, every single food choice. Right. Well, imagine. let me. I mean, let, let me put it this way. If, if I can't I may be interrupt. Let's I mean, so, in the morning. You know, I can't. I can't do much at four in the morning. Yeah, I think the restaurant and you know the choices. I think for me, probably that that still and and things have changed so much in the last ten years since we moved here. I mean, I remember moving here and going into right. town. And Sunday and I couldn't find a coffee shop that was open because the one coffee shop that they had at the time was off on Sundays and I'm like how do you close a coffee shop yeah. you know so right. but, the thing, but you know, I think that the restaurants and like okay. you know entertainment you're still going into the city but the beauty is is that you're so close that you have that you just get in your car and just drive in yeah got it okay that makes sense and then uh Carolyn and Jack yeah uh, what what uh this is so funny. I always love asking you. What, what would what would be kind of a, a, a thing to consider or something, or a, or a possible negative out, out there by you? I don't know of any negatives. Do you, Jack? I mean, I, I <laughs> well, you know, I mean, I, I think from from your perspective, probably not. But uh, no. you know, uh, <laughs> you know, for decades, for, and I love for, for, for me, uh, for me, Carolyn lives in the backcountry, as we were talking about the backcountry, and and uh, has lived there since I was a kid in the same home. And uh, I, I live downtown. And one thing I noticed the difference between downtown, because we have had an apartment in Manhattan uh, recently, and also one out, I've had my one out here in Greenwich, is that uh, yeah, things do shut down during the week. And although, um, you know, we do have great restaurants, and it really is, I mean, you can really be here and, and feel like you're in a cosmopolitan area. Uh, it shuts down during the week at 10 o'clock. And okay. so, um, so that, that, that's one negative. I think the other one is more of a pet peeve because during the, the morning rush, you can hop on a 41 minute express train to Grand Central and uh, you know no stops, but then off peak, it's all local and it takes about 55 minutes. So I guess if you were okay. to say, you know, but if you're doing the, the commute, it's, it's, it's only 41 minutes. So it's actually pretty good. Mm -hmm. Okay. That sounds, that makes sense. And I thank, thank you guys for sharing that stuff. Sure. Uh, so now I wanted to shift it to Dean for a couple minutes here. So, and Dean again is with uh, a mortgage consultant with Loan Depot. So Dean, you know, here in the city, we're used to 20% down, no questions asked. Do you have to put 20% down on all housing products outside no. of New York City? No, not at all. Uh, okay. I, up to one and one point one million, I would say you could still get to ninety percent. Uh, okay, so ten percent down up to one one. That's great. If you're seeing any houses in the lower, like a uh, lower at lower median uh, price range, uh, say the eight hundreds, you can still even get away with five percent down. And believe it, loans we've I've done uh, up up to uh, one one and a half million with very little down. So there are options out there, uh, but. As you get above the 1.1 to 1.2, you're generally going to get near the required of 20% down. Okay, so so if you're you said once you go north of like one two, it comes up to 20, but really anything less than that, you can, which is great. Not limited. You're not limited to have to put down 20 or 30 percent. Right. And now quickly, Dean. So so my understanding, uh, you know, as and one of the things that that uh, Compass does is run a lot of national calls. My understanding is banks are are now tightening, uh, you know, lending practices. They want to have higher credit scores. They're uh, what's going. What's all going on with that? Well, there's definitely been some some shift due to the COVID uh, nineteen virus over the last few months. Uh, some investors retreating from you know mortgage backed securities, and but the market has stabilized a lot since March and. Uh, a lot of that negativity has shifted to more pot, you know, we're seeing a lot more positive news coming where some of those restrictions we might have heard about a month ago have been lifted. So okay. there, there are some lenders that might still have some higher debt, higher credit score requirements, but uh, we're sort of business as usual and with some limited changes, but we are seeing more and more positive uh, 
news from all different lenders and investors out there. Okay, less, that sounds negative in the last month and, and, and more positive, especially okay. with Fed, Fed stimulus, uh, um, quantitative easing, and the other input from the Fed recently. Right. So it was maybe perhaps initially a little knee jerk uh, reaction when it first came in, you know, oh my gosh, here we are with Great Recession all over again. And now that things have calmed down. Things have calmed, things have definitely settled down the beginning of end of March, early April. Every day was a lot, lot, of, uh, lot of different news, a lot of negative news, and things have absolutely settled down. Oh, that's great. That's great. And then, of course, rates, uh, you know, we, we've had such a great low rate run, if you will, uh, really since 2008, 2000. I, give us a little scoop on rates right now. Rates um, are, everyone probably aware, historically low, and they're going to be low for the time being, for a while. So I don't think there should be any panic of rates skyrocketing anytime soon. The economy still needs to get uh, healthy. Unemployment needs to come back. There's a lot of factors out there that are going to keep the rates low for, for a good period of time. So it's a perfect opportunity for buyers that are still out there uh, to you know, borrow at extremely low rates. Wow, that's great. And so, and quickly, uh, you know, one of the uh, one of the the common products that a lot of people use in the city is, uh, you know, the ten year IO, then converted to a thirty year fix. The first one those is interest only, so your rates are low, and you can pay down the the principal if you're on a bonus schedule. It, are you seeing that out there in in the suburbs too, or is it more of a thirty year fixed crowd, or fifteen year fixed, or or what's your take? It really depends on the client's profession. You know, like you said, if you have a bonus structured or compensation plan where the, the a 10 year IO makes sense, that's gonna be the product mm -hmm. that best suits them. But if somebody is a straight salary, salaried worker, the 30 year fix tends to be pretty popular because the rates are so low that there's, so, there's such little risk that uh, I find that to be the most popular, but it depends on the profession. So somebody with a low, with a low base and high bonus you know, driven uh, earnings will certainly look for the IO products. Okay, well that and, sounds great. Sorry for that. I'm saying IO. I'll just I'll clarify. <laughs> interest only. That just means it's, it's a lower lower payment uh, initially. That sounds great, and especially if you're you know planning your salary to increase over time, which I'm sure everybody is. It's a nice way Absolutely. to get in to a little bigger uh, a bigger place. So so Adam and and Zoya and and in full disclosure, Adam and Zoya also sell in Brooklyn as well uh so, so so you guys know this right if somebody wants to make an off for us uh you know manhattan brooklyn bro we lost you i, I don't think it's our wi-fi introduction um possibly your firstborn depending upon the the property uh, is is all of that needed to make an offer on a house out there so the one thing you really need to do is to have your financing ready or your proof of funds ready and nothing to sell. A, a seller is probably not going to listen to an offer if you need to sell your place or if you're not really serious. Most of the people who are making offers are like, you know, they're like ready to go. Uh, what I will say though about the co-op market here in the River Towns and in Westchester in general that is really inexpensive. I mean, uh, a two bedroom, you know, for under three hundred thousand dollars, in some cases, uh, one I actually have what two bedroom co op for one ninety, and in that wow. specific, they accepted a buyer recently, and I think his, I think his debt to income ratio was like, like thirty seven percent, and you can imagine, like I was, I couldn't sleep when I saw that, and I thought, <laughs> oh. yeah, as a newsflash in the city, it's usually twenty eight to, to thirty, and, and maybe thirty two. He right. was at thirty seven, and I was like, oh no, but you know. They, they love him and he's going to be happy. And they didn't even interview him. No interview. Yeah. Oh, so. that's great. And, and Jack and Carolyn, what, what's it like out there in Greenwich? What, what, what stuff do people need to come to you with paperwork and all that stuff? Uh, well, they're not really coming to us with paperwork. I mean, when they present an offer, they will uh, provide information to make the the, the, the seller feel comfortable about their offer and okay. uh, depending on the price level, um, it's, it's really just the package that they put together. Uh, in many cases, uh, up, up, you know, above a certain range, I think when you start to get above four or five million, we're talking about cash buyers. 
Uh, I know it's a nice, nice thing to have to, to deal with. They just come in and they pay cash and we close within 30 days. So it, it's not all the cases, but uh, most of our volume will be, uh, you know, between the, you know, the one and one and 3.5 where they do have a mortgage. And, um, you know, we don't really get involved with it that much as far it's really just, uh, uh, you know, as long as we know that there's, there's uh, they're qualified and yeah, yeah so qualified. it's a little bit more a little bit more uh, privacy for the buyers as well then generally right speaking. right i mean they they do qualify and then of course we go into a contingent period and they have to get their mortgage and then it, we clear that and once that's done it's a it's a done deal so uh, i don't know carolyn if you want to add anything to that but uh, i know you've had a lot of different experiences than i have with uh um with, with no well sometimes we'll, we'll ask for proof of funds it just depends on um mm -hmm what how we feel what we want to ask a buyer our experience with the buyer and um you know what they've been presenting to us but we would usually just turn it over to the attorney and um the attorney gets involved okay that makes sense well, well, so that's i will say that uh, when we do have buyers though i will say that i i do ask the question and i make sure that all their their ducks are in a row and they don't have to sell that's that's obvious because that mm -hmm. that's you know and i'm not going to go and show somebody homes for you know for two three weeks and then say oh yeah by the way we got to sell our place in the city uh, right so, that, so that's that's so so just kind of a quick note on that and, and if anybody here is in the silly or in the in the silly in the city uh <laughs> and wanting to sell that that's one of the you know kind of our 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 sales here is that it can be a seamless transition with us, we could, uh, you know, we could definitely put it on the market with you here in the city, and and generally once it goes into contract, that's when I always advise my sellers that's a good time for you to start making office on other properties. Um, is that kind of what you guys get in your end as well? Yes. Yeah, they feel more comfortable once they they have it in uh, in escrow or uh, at least have uh, an accepted offer. I mean, it depends right. on the individual. Some people can can float both. Uh, you know, right. of course, Compass has the bridge loan, so that's always good for for those uh, cases as well. So, um, but uh, but generally, yeah, I, I've I've been in situations where I've gotten somebody ready to make an offer, then they've decided, you know what, I I can I can buy I can own both, but I'd rather not, and then so then they go they retrench and they go back and and say that they want. Right. To so that's so that's I agree. So so yeah, the one thing that Compass has again, it's a little bit of a plug here. Is we do have uh, we do cover bridge loans, uh, which I think is great for the transition part of, of having both properties at once. And I always tell my my sellers, and uh, you know, it might be a little like woo woo or something, but but if you put all your efforts into selling your place and finding something, uh, the universe pretty much rewards you. I I I really haven't had anybody say, you know, oh I'm out of I'm out of something I can't do anything. Um, the property is just, you know, it works. And, and I think people have been doing that for hundreds of years. Uh, but we can talk more about that going into it. I did, I, did um, want, I did want to add the fact that we have been in, in situations uh, several times with buyers who were actually needing to sell. And I think that, and we managed, we managed to the offer, we managed to float both and managed to get it to closing on both ends. So mm -hmm. I, think that, I think that it really depends. And, uh, you know, some, some buyers don't have a choice. You gotta just work right. with people. You can also be in an off market here where maybe the property's been sitting on the market for quite some time. So, you know, the, the seller is more willing to talk and kind of be a little more patient. I mean, obviously it's not ideal, like in a, in a, in a very busy market, that's not gonna, that's not going to fly, but I mean, we've right. had on the dead of winter where we have a little more leverage, and you know, this is a property where no one's wanted for quite some time, and now we have somebody who does want it, but so, so you know, you kind of figure it out. I you can figure, it. and that that brings up a good point too. Just for quick clarification, or just a, kind of an FYI, if you don't know this, so so here in Manhattan and Brooklyn, the sales season begins really January first or January second. Uh, for myself, between January through Memorial Day, that's 70% of my yearly business happens. And uh, by you guys, it usually starts picking up, you know, generally, what, March, April, and then the summer is the big, so there's a little bit of an overlap. 
Is that we had, we've had correct? A last year no last year we had a late spring. this year we were, this year we had an early spring we had a crazy december and it just kept going and then COVID uh -huh. happened we were expecting an Got early spring. Mm -hmm. even in the wow. winter winter we had played into it a lot it, was, it helped okay definitely last year 2019 though was i think really late it was late and prior to that uh, oh, sorry first of february things just took off so last year they didn't even though everyone expected it to be the same thing as the year before and uh so it kind of skipped and then this so, year so the expecting it to be early again but then obviously things change yeah got it but Jack, we don't did you want to say anything real quick i'm sorry i just wanted to keep going uh no, no, that's that's fine. Um, again, a lot of it has to do with some 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 macroeconomic trends that are happening that uh, are uh, that, that are affecting the year. Like for example, now with with coronavirus, you know, we saw a very strong early uh, January, February, and um, things have tailed off a little. But we we have so many uh, so many people that are looking now. They're just kind of looking online, but they don't want to pull the trigger until they can actually physically go in and see the property. And we're trying to get them out there to do that now. Uh, right. oh, to get back to your, oh, go yeah, ahead, to get, to get back to your point about uh, you know people that are that need to sell to buy, you know, I, I'm just thinking about it. I'm, I mean, we we have a half a dozen people right now that need to sell before they're going to buy, uh, at least, and uh, so that 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 is a, a strong uh, a strong point about um, you know, trying to get people out of their their homes into the new ones uh, mm -hmm. as, as best as possible. Understood. Yeah. Um, and that, so that's one other thing also I wanted to jump in before we get into my, one of, it's going to be probably my favorite part of this whole conversation, which is seeing actual real properties at real price points. So people have a quick idea of what's happening or what's going on. So, so here in New York city, you know, we are locked down really till the end of June to physically show any property. And my understanding is you can physically see property in your areas right now. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's true. Yeah. No. All right. So, wait. Great. Great. Not in Westchester. Um, so in Westchester, there are two ways that one can see properties. You can either, as an agent, go in alone into a home, whether someone's living there or not. They can't be present at the showing. You go in. You can do a virtual showing with your client alone. Okay. Or alternatively, you can schedule an in-person showing for your client to go in without you. Got where it. arrangement is made through the seller for the door to be left open. And as the agent, you can be in the driveway sitting in your car in case something comes up and there's a question, but you are not allowed to go into the home for an in-person showing with your clients. Yeah. Got it. And Greenwich, it's a little more flexible, correct, Carolyn? We are. Uh, we've been showing. And as, okay. long as, as long as the owners, we discuss this with all of our listings, and um, several of them are fine with it. Some say, no, let's wait a couple of weeks. Um, okay. But we are showing our listings and we have clients this weekend. I have, you know, we have a couple of clients coming out and we're showing other listings. So it's gloves, masks, distancing, being very careful. Um, we're just being extremely careful, but yes, we're showing. Okay, that's great. That's great. So you got, uh, you know, people looking out there maybe have a little bit of a leg up. Um, all right, so uh, Zoya and Adam, why don't you start first here? What what's it, what's a property you want to show us for something? And I guess for the screen share, we're gonna we'll go through the three price points with you know each person in its entirety rather than shifting back and forth. I think that might be confusing. Um, so for Westchester, the the first uh, zone is a million dollars or less. What do you have to show us and, and what do you get? So um, this is a property in Hastings. Wow, that's really cute. It's a really pretty Tudor. It has uh, a view of the river and uh, it can use some updating. It's not a very okay. big, a little bit over 2000 square feet. Um, but I mean, you've got these beautiful views. It's the walkability to town and to the train. Okay. Right off of the Croton Aqueduct, which is a really wonderful trail that goes way up to, where does it go? I think it goes to Croton. Oh, it goes to the Croton Aqueduct. <laughs> 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 um, 
but it starts, I think it starts in, in Van Cortlandt Park, doesn't it? I'm not an expert, but yes, I think so. Okay. So this basically, how many bedrooms, how many bathrooms? There are three bedrooms, two and a half baths. Okay. And what's the lot size? Go, go into the lot size. Oh, Martin. Hang on. Um, it's, it's only an eighth of an acre. Okay. Uh, it's a little, it's a little small. Uh, most of the lots are going to be a quarter acre, but in this section of Hastings, it's kind of in the hills and okay. you have properties that are like almost three acres. Some of these homes. Uh, okay. so but this cute is cute. You're, you're on the river. It's walkable. <laughs> Can you walk to the train station if you need to? It's, it's under 10 minutes. It's, to the train. It's downhill. Wow. Yeah. The <laughs> both ways. No, it's uphill. <laughs> <laughs> uphill both ways. That's great. Okay, so moving on to something next. So that that was great. And so that one was, I'm sorry, that was uh, 949, correct? Yeah, that was 949. Or nine, 989, okay. Uh, okay, so next up on on the scale kind of that we have here, which is, you know, in the kind of the, around the two, one and a half to two and a half. So two for two, four, tell us about this. You're getting 35, slightly over 3,500 square feet five bedrooms, three bathrooms in the beautiful uh, village of Bronxville. And this is, I mean, Bronxville, I want to say, Bronxville in a way sort of always reminded me a little bit of Greenwich, just kind okay. of like a, a little Greenwich, just because it's got a really cute, like downtown, some nice restaurants and... Um, they also stopped developing new construction there uh, decades ago. So it's, pretty, it's a pretty tight place. It's really right. down Bronx Village School of uh, Bronxville School District. I mean, it's it's the tiniest of towns. Uh, with not, you know, the lots are tiny, so you're not really going to have much of a lot. <clears throat> uh, but you're going to have the village as your playground, as they say when you live in the city. You know, you have the city right. as your playground. Right. You know, well, this I is mean, charming, and it looks completely, completely done. The quarter acre, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's I nice. mean, you know, the taxes are fifty-two thousand dollars a year which i think you know is did you hear that did, <laughs> did our audio cut out the taxes no are it is well you know i have i have a lot of uh you know the clients that moved to bronxville over the years and and their take and i'm talking as a father here is that uh you know that the taxes you just quoted is is the tuition for one kid at private school in the city and uh, the schools in Bronxville are amazing, so they call it the public private school, uh, yes. kind of wink, yeah. wink, and and they also joke that it's the, the, the day after the kids graduate high school, the house is going up for sale to move back in to the That's city. Right. Um, so uh, you know, you, you get the old proverbial, you get what you pay for. And then here, tell us a little bit about that. This is kind of fun. I wanted a dream property for everybody. Uh, so tell us a little bit about this. Uh, private beach and this beautiful view of the Long Island Sound. And uh, it's in Rye. And here, you know, you're, you're right in the center of Rye with walking to the train. There's a beach, there's uh, an amusement park. I mean, it's... You can go visit Jack and Carolyn. It's not too far from Greenwich. That's right. <laughs> you, could take, you could take a little ferry across the way and visit Greenwich. Ferry. You can see you can see Greenwich from there. Um, so I mean, this is a really beautiful, lavish home for people who love old homes and appreciate character because it's been really meticulously restored. Yeah, it's gorgeous. Wow, that's gorgeous. And I'm sorry, I my my internet or kind of faded out a little bit. What what's uh so this is um is on a little over <laughs> half an acre. Yep, yep. Uh, 0.63 acres, just under $7 million. About 5,000 square feet, five bedrooms, two and a half baths. Um, yeah. But do you oh, want to see your kind of. Yeah, let's start. see that one. Let's see that quick one for the 649. That one looked interesting. Just, this is actually. I want to go to Greenwich. Listing of ours that we listed literally a week after the pandemic hit. Yeah, this went on the market. And April it was on the market about two weeks. So, and so a lot of, you know, they call the river towns, they wrote an article in the New York Times, they called it hipsterbia on the Hudson years ago. Okay. And I think that 
it's houses like this that kind of appeal to what they meant by that that hipster demographic right you know? This, this, this. I mean, we take our photos very seriously, but even without the exceptional photographs, it's mm -hmm. it's a quite magical little house. It's a, I mean, it's small. It's a small house, twelve hundred feet. And so, I'm sorry. What's the square footage? My Where's, husband just said he loves this house. Uh, <laughs> I'm moving, I guess. Okay. What uh, What's the square footage on this? Thirteen hundred square feet. It's three bedrooms, one and a half bathrooms. But you know, for a first time buyer with a small family, you know, or someone who's like starting to think about a family. Right, it's like, charming. It's, and even if someone wanted to buy it and keep it as a weekend place or, you know, a little getaway outside of the city, this it is would a, definitely. This is all original tile. This is beautiful, like um, pistachio. I don't know, it reminds me of ice cream, these tile. Wow, this Here's is it. great. Um, That's what it looks like, a real it. small house, wow. it's very mm -hmm. Section it's got a magical things. backyard. Yeah. I mean, look at this backyard. Quite... There's like a little babbling brook in the back. Yeah, and... you can't really see it, but there's a brook. You know, we, could, we couldn't really get great photos because of COVID, but uh, we tried. No, that's great. <laughs> well, thank you for sharing that. Um, as we switch over to, to uh, Jack and Carolyn, um, there, there was an article actually in the Times, and uh, Leonard Steinberg of Compass was, was featured in it where that the river, you know, that the suburbs is possibly the new country house because the commute is so much shorter. And especially with working from home now, uh, which I think people are gonna be doing even post COVID-19 that you can, number of firms are, are saying you don't have to come back to the office ever. Uh, yeah. So, mm. you know, a, a country home alternative could really be in Westchester or Greenwich. Um, all right, so Jack and Carolyn, do uh, you want to do a, a screen share or whatever to, sure. to help us out and show what's what's going on? And again, all of these are real properties, uh, minus the one that was just in contract. Uh, but these are all real properties you guys can see tomorrow. Yeah. Let me, oh, well, I've got mine. Uh, mine is disabled. I got to. You got to oh, enable uh, my screen sharing. Jared, Post disabled. Enable screen sharing was disabled hopefully it can be enabled shortly okay now i'm okay now i can do it all right high tech uh excitement here <laughs> that's top one i guess that's me here okay share let's share this okay um yeah so um okay i'm just doing a little all right it's it's just uh it's revving up it's revving up yeah Okay. Sorry. Just give me one second. Oh, no problem. All right. Always under pressure with these uh, with these Zoom calls, right? Admire your Having lighting. Everything. We can just admire your lighting yet again. That's <laughs> blue, blue blazer. Okay. Right. So, are, are we are we are we shared yet? Are you seeing uh, the the Flex MLS uh, screen right now? We are not. You're not. Okay. Um, I'm trying to share my screen. I don't know what, uh, uh, let's see, so, so far. oh, I see, I see what it's doing. Okay, there's a couple things here going on. Try that. Uh, yeah, we're on it. You're on it? Okay, yeah, I see it now. We're it's Okay, it. so this is, uh, this is not one of our property. I wanted to start off with under a million. Uh, this Beautiful. is not one of our, our properties, but I want to give you a flavor of what you can get. This is uh, okay. just under uh, just under a million. Actually, it's it's eight seventy eight. It's it's about as close to the New York line as you can get. So uh, it's, it's on the Portchester line uh, in Greenwich, western part of Greenwich. Uh, okay. Great great neighborhood. Again, uh, you know, one car garage, small uh, small home. But it's um, again, this is the the type of thing that you might get as a single family home uh, mm -hmm. in Greenwich, um, and uh, at, you know, for under a million. There are a lot of, uh, uh, there were there were several to show. However, I just didn't want to, you know, show too no, many no. things that can, were. Can, can you rappers. can you scroll through the pictures a little bit as you as you talk yeah, about it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hang on a second here. Um, sure. And and then can you so, walk you know, to town? Is this walkable to town? No, anything? it's not. Or? No, this is um, this is not walk to town. I mean, there there, in this situation, you could you know maybe take a ten minute walk and get down to an area where there are a couple of stores, but, uh, you know, in the, uh, on the line between Greenwich and, and Portchester, but you're not okay. going to be downtown Greenwich. So you have to take, you have to drive a car. 
Um, as you can see, you know, of course it needs updating, but it's clean, it's fresh. Uh, and again, it's really, uh, it's, you know, it's, it's a smaller home that, uh, um, that that's a good starter, three bedroom home. So that's great. And what's the square footage on this? Uh, this one here, let's see, let me take a look at the list. Uh, oh, sorry, that's not the detail. Um, this one here is, uh, I looked at these screens in so long, okay, about 2,300 square feet. Now, okay, again, so it, it's, it's a good also, size. Yeah, so it's also indicative of the fact that it is, uh, it's just three bedrooms, uh, you know, two and a half baths. Um, it's also indicative of the, of the fact that uh, the, the location it's in, very kind of off to the side of town. It's not really in town. I'm going to, um, okay. I'm actually going to stop the share here and then I'm going to share my other um, okay. other screen here. And let me see if you can get, uh, let me know if you get that. Yep, that should be on yep, now. This is actually it. on our website. And what I have here okay. are our, um, our listings and I, I you know, our, our the least expensive one right now is uh, is on. Well, we have one pending at, at one four seven five, but then we have it's on at um, one eight two five, and um, and that's really a, a, a fantastic uh, country. Yeah, why don't you tell us that one looks great? Tell us about yeah, it. Yeah, this is this is a beautiful. Carolyn, you wanna you wanna go? You're you're the one who loves showing this house. Talk about I love showing. <laughs> this is where this is where I'm at all the time. This is an antique that dates back to, and folklore says this, 1700s. The town hall has it at 1800. And the home has grown. And over on the right side was the original house. And the center of the house, wow. that was initially built. The center of the house, we believe, to have been built around the 1920s. And then the present owners have been there 45 years, raised three girls. And it's wow. beautiful property wonderful interior with detail, um, high ceilings, you know, they, the owner is a builder, so you wow. know the house is in I can tell. condition. And it, right. it's fun to show this, um, people love it. We have some interest right now, which is wonderful. Um, but this is, wow, this is really a pleasure. Ceiling. Look at this, yeah. this was the original home in the 1700s. Yeah, that's, that's, the, that's so, the master and that's the original. Obviously not the best. Not a great character. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. haven't changed the wallpaper, but we're, we're, we're good, you know, that's... Uh, no, that was the original house, right here. Yeah, that's, right there, uh, that was the original part. Amazing. Yeah. And so what, um, what, what's, where is this exactly, and, and what's the lot size? It looks like you get a lot of... Uh, Almost three acres. Size. It's Stunning. south of the Merritt Parkway. I'd say it's maybe eight minutes from town. And it's off of Stanwich Road, which probably doesn't mean anything, but it's, it's close to town. It's, quite, it's in between Coscob and Greenwich. And, okay. Um, it's a great location. It really is. Right, it's right. Great right off Stanwich Road, on Cat Rock Road. That's this here. Then you, yeah, as you go up there, we've got to, you know, just go through a couple of them. Uh, this one yeah, is, uh, it, it, it is uh, it's, I'm not going to go through necessarily. These are, these are just a, a little bit about the same price range. And again, a little closer to central Greenwich, uh, different style altogether. Uh, this one has, um, and that's just showing the living room because it's got a big open space, but like it's that style, it's that uh, uh, kind of a more contemporary style. So yeah, you have that. Um, okay. And then this one here is kind of a more mid-century modern home uh, that, that's on a lake and it really is surrounded by the lake. Uh, as you go up that in price, yeah, as you go up in price, I mean, we've got a couple that are, uh, what's interesting in Greenwich, you know, which I, I think people would find uh, surprising, is that we do have uh, townhomes that are, and this is one very interesting one here, uh, the, oh, the, yeah. one at, um, the, the 186 like Millbank, which one, is right, if you don't right, mind. right yeah, downtown. You... Yeah, uh, so this is going up again from the, the, the twos in that area to go up into the threes, and this is right in town. Uh, there is actually, if you can see in the back side, there's a, there's a unit back here. So there's a front and a back unit. This is actually 186A. That's 186B. And okay. um, but but they are they they are amazing, well built units that have been you know built in the last 15 years. And uh, um, you know before this, the the homes that were there were these you know turn of the century, turn of the, the last century uh, <laughs> Victorian homes that kind of lined the street. And then um, over the past 20 years, they, it's really turned over, and they they have these beautiful high ceiling, very well constructed, four, five, six, even seven thousand square foot uh, kind of in town um, 
uh, kind of mini mansions. You can see there's a you know, there's the yeah the study right there. And uh, so yeah. if somebody wants to be right in town and walk, uh, take five minutes to be on Greenwich Avenue, this is where you want to be. Jack, when were those? Oh, that's good. I think this was Let's built go in ahead. 2006. This thing was built. 2006, I think it was, yeah. yeah and this is nice this because one. it has four bedrooms. This is like a home because a lot of the condominiums will have a couple bedrooms on the second floor, one on the third, one on the lower level. Elevator. So you have a lot of steps. And elevator, this particular yeah. one, have, there is an elevator, but this particular one has four bedrooms on the second floor. So it's very much like a home, which is very nice. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Uh, Jack, I'm going to have to cut you off because we only have a few minutes left and I wanted to okay. shift, uh, shift gears a little bit. But again, oh uh, boy, okay. All right. Yeah. In... Didn't get to the good it, stuff it... yet. But, uh, yeah, all right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, you know, we've got some uh, stuff yeah. coming on. That's uh, I, I know that you were talking and starting in the lower price ranges, but we've got some amazing stuff in the back country and mid country that is that goes up. Uh, something coming on that's going to be at 8.3. This one has a contingent wow. contract, but of course, as you know, nothing's done until it's done. So uh, that that's a lock lane. That's that's beautiful. Bayberry at just under yeah, five. Beautiful right. estates. Um, in fact, Martin, I think you've seen the Bayberry home. I think you were there. Right, right. That was yeah. really nice. And, and this is uh, this, this is there's a story behind this for Conyers Farm. Also, it's on 10 acres, beautiful barn and uh, gatehouse for the original Conyers Farm estate, which was originally 1,200 wow. acres. And there's a, a building okay. lot. So 10 acres, they can, you can build a 10,000 square foot home on this property. So there's a lot of different options. Um, and, uh, you know, if anybody wants to talk to us about yeah. that, you know, be happy to. Absolutely. We can check that out. Sure. So, so quickly, and I want to be respectful of everybody's time here. Uh, and we're going to, we may go over a minute or two. So, you know, quickly here, in, if you're going to be selling a property in uh, Manhattan or Brooklyn, your transactional costs is going to be, you know, on average, 8 to 10% uh, of the purchase price, right? That's the broker's fee. That's the, you know, city and state transfer tax. If you're in a co-op, it could be a flip tax. If you're in a condo, they don't call it a flip tax, but it is a flip tax. Uh, what are closing costs for buyers quickly in Westchester? You have the mansion tax and, and the mortgage recording tax. Just for the state, is there an additional one for the county at all or anything? An extra one if you're in Yonkers, there's an extra half percent in Yonkers, but otherwise Westchester is 1.05% 1 1 of whatever you're borrowing, plus your, plus your mansion tax if you're over a million. Okay, so that's, that's lower. Um, and then quickly in Greenwich, what are, what are the closing costs associated uh, when buying? We don't have the mansion tax, so we take that out. It, it's similar. I hate you already. <laughs> <laughs> so um, it's probably very similar without the mansion tax, and I think there are a couple of other um, costs in there that we that we don't have. That's a little bit different. Yes. Okay, so closing costs. Would you? Is I'm sorry. It, is it, there it, a mortgage it varies cost? on the property. I mean, it just varies on every property. Okay, that sounds think, great. Yeah. More nice one. Uh, Traditionally, it's a little bit less than what uh, you would see in Westchester uh, because of the mansion tax, and the taxes are lower, and some of the closing costs are a little less. Uh, a lot of the attorneys kind of hammer that out, though, so we don't get involved with that as much. Yeah. Okay. Dean, you wanted to say something? Yeah, I just want to clarify. There's more fees than just the mortgage tax and the mansion tax. There's uh, title insurance and other fees if you're financing, and the recording fees are definitely different in New York versus Connecticut, so a little bit different, but. Uh, it'll probably be in the four to five percent range total if you're financing, you know, of the four to five percent of the loan amount. In addition, if there's a mansion tax, so it depends how much the bar. It depends how much somebody's financing. If they're not financing, okay. Thank you for that clarification. Uh, it's nine o'clock already. I, I told everybody in the pre-show this hour goes super super fast. Uh, so, I, but I wanted to give everybody one quick uh, closing line and please make it a sentence or two. Uh, so Adam and Zoya, what are your final thoughts out there in Westchester uh, with the river towns? Um, Zoya, <laughs> <laughs> I, I think it's a great time to buy. There's, a there's not much on the market. So if, you're, if you really are thinking about it, you, you need to be curious um, and you just come out and take a look for yourself um, while you can. And we're happy to do virtual tours, but I mean, you know, you can rent a car and drive up here.
Yeah, the market is great. very quickly here right now. I mean, great. things are coming up, and great. two days later, they're highest and best, and they're off. So it's a hot, it's hot going on. Uh, Jack and Carolyn. Yeah, you know, as things start to open up again, we're starting to see people coming out and looking. It's uh, it's a beautiful time to, you know, throw on a mask and walk around town. And uh, actually, the restaurants are uh, are opening up outside again. So it's a good time to come yeah, take I've, a look I, at the town. I got the email for RH open uh, two days in a row. They're all excited that the Greenwich RH is open. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So they um, so 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 again, it's it's a good time to just come up and get a feel for the town, and. Uh, and we'd be happy to help anybody uh, if they have any questions. That sounds great. And Dean? On the mortgage side, I would say uh, Zoya and Adam were saying that very little inventory, a lot of, a lot of demand. So be very, be prepared, get your paperwork to your lender ahead of time, get everything organized. So if you want to pull the trigger and make an offer, you're ready and not, you know, behind. And a quick, quick few points on Westchester just to add, not at that much traffic that you're going to find elsewhere. We have five highways here two highways that go across, plus five going up north and south. So I find that to be a plus sometimes. There's no bridge traffic when you want to get away for the weekend, go north, or if you're going up on Hudson Line, or go to New England, want to visit relatives in Boston, or go to the Rhode Island beaches. A lot of positives, and uh, hope you can make it up here. That sounds great. Well, that's great, Dean. So once again, uh, Dean Curtis with Lone Depot, Adam and Zoya with Compass out in Westchester, the Adam and Zoya team. Uh, and Jack and Carolyn Sarson out in West, or not Western, Greenwich. I could have made a mistake. Greenwich. Apologize, guys, on that. Also with Compass. Thanks, guys, so much. Everybody, uh, at the end of this, uh, you know, we'll, we'll have, you know, a replay on this. And I'm Martin Knighton with the Martin Knighton team. Also, want to do a quick shout out for Jared Salinas Stick for doing an amazing job organizing all this. Thank you, everybody. Uh, and hopefully, this will be a nice kickoff for your Memorial Day weekend. So thank you again. Okay. Thank, thank you. you, Martin. Thanks. Take care. Take care. Bye, Bye everybody. Bye. Bye. Have a nice weekend. Everybody, All right, take so. care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.